Guys, and welcome back to another Lost Bits video right here on Tetra Big Gaming, the series where we explore the unused, scrapped, and unseen content in gaming. After the very long hiatus since my last Sonic Lost Bits video, it's finally time for me to cover Sonic and Knuckles. Now initially the plan was to cover Sonic 3 and Knuckles together, but I noticed there are a lot of things that overlap between both games, so to keep things better organized, hopefully more coherent, and to distance some time from Cybershell's bonus video, I'm gonna be covering them separately. So expect a dedicated Sonic 3 video down the line. Yay, get to see comments like this for a bit longer. And really quick, if you do end up enjoying this video, consider hitting that sub button. Only about half a percent of viewers actually end up subscribing, and new subscribers help the channel grow every day, and I really appreciate it. Thanks. Anyways, go grab your dang Chaos Emeralds again. It's time to find some lost bits. Alright, first I think it's important to have some context for this game to better understand why there's so much content cross-pollinating between Sonic 3 and Sonic and & Knuckles. Well, the answer is quite simple. Initially, they were both planned to be part of one big game. Unfortunately, however, due to storage limitations and to meet a deadline for a promotional deal with McDonald's, the game was split up, with Sonic 3 releasing first and Sonic & Knuckles becoming its expansion pack sequel hybrid. Now with that context in mind, let's first start off this video with some prototypes of Sonic & Knuckles. First up is a prototype build labeled 3C, with a build date of April 8th, 1994. Now despite it still having things like the title screen and stages left over from Sonic 3, since this build is about two months after the game's initial release, this is actually a prototype for Sonic & Knuckles. Well, technically it was actually once planned to be released as Sonic the Hedgehog 3 Limited Edition, which was supposed to essentially be the complete experience of Sonic 3 & Knuckles on one cart, instead of using Sega's lock-on features. And ultimately, this Sonic 3 Limited Edition itself became a lost bit, as it was never released. Anyways, back to the prototypes. So first, and probably most importantly, is that here, Knuckles is selectable as a playable character in the single-player mode, rather than just in the two-player competitive mode as seen in Sonic 3. Other general differences here from the final release of Sonic & Knuckles include not having super forms of Knuckles or Tails implemented yet, no ending sequence, several audio clips are still from Sonic 3, several are still missing for Knuckles, and more. There are also numerous changes, both visual and gameplay-wise, in pretty much all of the levels, but these are all either just differences seen between Sonic 3 and Sonic & Knuckles, or they are just segments that weren't fully developed yet, like Knuckles' root in Hydro City Zone, still lacking any checkpoints, rings, or enemies. Also, there were some weird misplaced graphics, like I saw these staticky monitors here in Sandopolis Zone. Overall, nothing super crazy, so I won't be going over all of these minor changes here, though. On the other hand, this prototype contains this flooring tile in Death Egg Zone, and these were considerably altered for the final release. Also of note, this must have been built pretty close to when work on Doomsday Zone had started, as it appears quite incomplete here. Basically, well, nothing is working yet, and with no super forms implemented in the build yet, as I mentioned earlier, you'll just repeatedly keep falling to your death. Here you can access an Act 1 and an Act 2, but in each case, there's no asteroid belt sections or anything really besides some graphics of the blue ship, the main segment of the final Death Egg robot, and yeah, just scattered graphics everywhere. Also, interestingly, the color palette for the background here, as well as for the heads-up display text, are different and messed up as we can see here. Next up, this build also contains early versions of the bonus and special stages. First off, back in my Sonic 3 prototypes video, we saw an early version of the Glowing Spheres game, and it's found here as well. But yeah, still very much incomplete. Not much has improved since that prototype, still no collision, and I'd honestly say the graphics look even worse here. Also, you can't float around here even with debug mode enabled, so there's much less we can actually see. Thankfully, on the other hand, the slot machine bonus game here looks much more complete, though the layout is still quite different from that of the final, and this version has many more rings everywhere. Now next are this prototype's Blue Sphere Special Stages. Some of these look fairly similar with minor changes like with Special Stages number 4 and 5, some just had their order changed here like Special Stage 6 became Special Stage 3 in the final, but then some were just entirely different. Special Stage 1 was completely changed, as were Special Stages 2, 7, and 8. 
Interestingly, Special Stage 3 here became a hidden, unused special stage in the final release. Normally, the final only has seven special stages, but by using the game's debug menu and sound test, this otherwise unused eighth stage can actually still be accessed. Next, this prototype also contains some unused graphics, many of which are segments of Sonic & Knuckles' exclusive levels, including Flying Battery, Lava Reef, Hidden Palace, Sky Sanctuary, and Death Egg Zones. Also at this point in development, the stage icons for all Sonic & Knuckles levels weren't implemented into the data select screen yet, so all of these guys go unused as well. Now before we move on, I just wanted to briefly mention the game's cheat codes. By entering in 1, 3, 5, and 7 in the level select sound test, you can access this prototype's debug mode. It lacks some of the features we've seen in previous games, but it does have a few which we'll come back to later in the video. And secondly, by entering in 2, 4, 6, and 8, you can instantly just give yourself all of the game's Chaos Emeralds to instantly save the day, I guess. If you haven't noticed, these codes are just the first four odd and even numbers respectively. I guess with this prototype being intended to not make it into the hands of the general public, the developers probably weren't too concerned with making the cheat codes that cryptic. Now there are several additional known prototypes between this one and the final release, with many incremental changes along the way. Things like the Super and Hyperforms were added, stages were fixed up, Doomsday Zone was completed, the Glowing Spheres bonus stage finally wasn't just an eyesore, and also the Slot Machine bonus game saw several changes until the final version that was shipped. Again, in the interest of time, I don't want to go over all of these other minor changes here, because there's honestly way too many of them, but if you are interested in reading up some more on them, as always, I'll leave a link to the Cutting Room Floor pages with my sources down in the description below. And on that note, now let's zip on over and talk about the final release of Sonic & Knuckles. First up, the unused graphics. Kicking them off is this device that appears to be projecting a hologram of the Death Egg. Being itself a reference to the Death Star from Star Wars, it's believed that this hologram could have also been a slight nod to the Star Wars movies as well. Interestingly, this projector can still be hacked into the game with some hex editing in Death Egg Zone's Act 2, so this act could have been where it was once intended to be used. Next up, we have this unused screw-looking thing meant for the Egg Golem boss of Sandopolis Zone, this stepping stone meant for Lava Reef Zone Act 2, an unused sprite of Egg Robo jumping, which isn't used because the Egg Robos never do jump in the game. And there's also this here graphic of Dr. Robotnik's head that was meant to be used during the boss fight in Act 2 of Flying Battery Zone, when the mech does its swinging attack. Now this sprite wasn't actually cut, but rather it goes unused, apparently due to a programming oversight. Interestingly, just like with the projector, this sprite can also be forced into the game, and here we can see how it was intended to be used. Next up, we have this animation of Knuckles hanging on that was meant specifically for the end of Act 2 in Mushroom Hill Zone. Now I'm sure some might think this is used since we see a similar horizontal animation during the end cutscene of the zone, but this one here is rotated as well as mirrored, and these sprites are actually unique in the game. Regardless though, based on its existence, it's thought that maybe at some point the plan here was for Knuckles to just hang on vertically instead of horizontally. Now I'm pretty sure a sprite like this has turned up in every 2D Sonic game I've covered so far on the series, but this game, yet again, contains a grayed out version of a death sprite, this time for Knuckles. As in all of those previous videos, these are thought to once again have been intended as a variant for the death sprite when dying to fire or lava. Last up for the unused graphics are those from the Slot Machine and Glowing Spheres bonus games. First up is this glowing slot machine pocket. Although its purpose isn't currently known, I assume it might have been an early version of the center thing that holds the character in place while the slots spin. I mean, it kinda looks like the pocket from Sonic 2's Casino Night Zone, and that's how it works there, so it would make sense. Then we have this sprite of Super Sonic, also meant for the slot machine. Now, I don't remember which video it was, but I swear I've seen or talked about this graphic somewhere before on the show. Then, for the Glowing Sphere bonus game side of things, there's this unused platform, as well as two unused gumballs. One glowing S1, as well as one green F-ball. Press F in the comments to pay respects to the F-ball. Next up, the slot machine also has some hidden placeholder graphics for the slot animations. 
These graphics are all the same Japanese excerpt of a famous Japanese poem known as Iroha. Iroha is essentially somewhat of a Japanese equivalent to the English ABC song, as in its entirety it contains each character of the Japanese syllabary no more than once. Here specifically, now I could be wrong about this, but I believe it's written in the Japanese katakana characters instead of the traditional hiragana. Being pretty much the Japanese version of the ABCs, it's no surprise that this is often used to test text in Japanese developed games. These 16 characters translate to even the blossoming flowers will eventually scatter. Who in our world? Moving on, one thing that's normally inaccessible in this game is the ability to play as Tails like in Sonic 3. Well, by forcing the game to do so, there is actually a way to play as Tails, if you can call this Tails. Unfortunately, most of the time there's no graphics at all, so you kind of have to keep track of where you think Tails is. But interestingly, in few instances throughout the game, you can actually still get Tails graphics to load, like here in Sky Sanctuary Zone. It's pretty weird. Now onto Sonic & Knuckles unused audio, there is a single track that's normally unused. Let's have a quick listen. This track is heard as sound number 32 in the game's sound test, but goes unused otherwise. Sound 32 in Sonic 3 corresponds to the jingle played after defeating the game's final boss, so it's plausible this unused track could have served a similar purpose in this game, and it certainly sounds like something that would play after a final boss. To back that up slightly, a longer version of this track is mixed in towards the end of the music for the end credits of the game. Much like the other 2D Sonic games I've covered here on Lost Bits, Sonic & Knuckles 2 has a few stages that are left over in the game, but go unused. The first and only unused regular zone stage that goes unused is the real Doomsday Act 2. Now I say real, because selecting Doomsday Act 2 in the game's secret stage select will just lead you to the pre-fight against the fingers. Unfortunately, there's not too much to this real Doomsday Act 2. You basically just load into a dark void, turn into supersonic, and then promptly die since you have zero rings here to start and there's no more to collect. What a way to go. Next is a second version of the slot machine bonus stage and it's just a copy of the regular one. That's exciting. Then similarly, there's also a second act version of the Glowing Spheres bonus game, and this one, while basically the same, does actually differ in this version as it's supposed to spawn Sonic directly inside of a wall. When I did manage to break out, I realized there's no rising electrical thing that normally causes you to lose, but here if you fall, you have to fall all the way to the bottom to die. Lastly, and again similarly, is a leftover Gumball Machine bonus stage. Now this bonus stage appears in Sonic 3 and Sonic 3 and Knuckles, but here in just standalone Sonic and Knuckles, trying to load it up here just results in this garbled up text and then the game just restarts back to the title screen. Unfortunately, this game is certainly no Sonic the Hedgehog 2 when it comes to leftover unused levels, but I guess it's better than nothing. Alright, and now last up for this video, let's talk about both the game's stage select I briefly mentioned earlier, as well as everyone's favorite, the debug mode makes another triumphant return in Sonic & Knuckles. So first off, the level select can be accessed here by pressing left left left, right right right, up 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 on one of these lifts in Mushroom Hill Zone, then pausing, pressing A to return to the title screen, and then pressing A and start. Here in this level select, you can choose any of this game's zones, bonus stages, as well as two of the special stages. Now I emphasize this game's zone, since as you can see, all of the zones shared between Sonic 3 and Knuckles are here. But if you try to load up any of the stages from Sonic 3, the game will just default you right back to Mushroom Hill Zone instead. Also, when choosing a stage, you will see these numbers here, and this is how you select which character to play as. Double zero is Sonic and Tails, one is just Sonic, two is just Tails, and three is just Knuckles. This being Sonic and Knuckles though, only Sonic and Knuckles are selectable, go figure, and selecting either Sonic and Tails or Tails solo will just default to playing as Sonic alone. 
As with the other Sonic games that have it, this level select is super useful for quickly getting to a stage, especially the ones towards the later half of the game. And lastly is the debug mode, which unlike previous games, isn't normally accessible even with any button or sound test inputs. Instead, you either need to use this code with a Game Genie, or get this, the Sonic and Knuckles debug mode can be accessed by using the debug mode in Sonic 3 and Knuckles, placing in and lining up a long row of S monitors, spin dashing through them which will cause the game to crash, then by pressing start on this glitched out screen, standalone Sonic and Knuckles will boot up with debug mode enabled. Yeah, I have several questions about this, but mainly, how could anyone ever discover this? Anyways, with the debug mode enabled, several returning features from past games, as well as some new ones, are accessible. When playing in a stage, pressing B will enter the edit mode we've seen before, pressing B and C together will cause either Sonic or Knuckles to cycle through all of their animation frames, And then a feature we haven't yet seen in a Sonic Lost Bits video, by pressing the A button you can literally flip the gravitational pull of the entire world here. Falling all the way up will result in a death just like falling off of a stage normally, but in some stages this allows you to try playing the stage in a brand new way, it's pretty cool. But the collision is pretty scuffed sometimes, so more often than not you'll just end up falling right through the floor, or ceiling I guess. Lastly, back to the edit mode, just like in previous games, this lets you not only fly around basically wherever you want, but it also gives you the ability to cycle through various objects that appear in each stage, and you can even place them in wherever you desire. This is super useful if you want to quickly give yourself a super ability, rings, a shield, or if you just want to customize a stage with more terrain or enemies. Or if you just want to mess it up, I guess you can do that too. Anyways, with the ability to fly around basically anywhere we want, we can find some secret, normally inaccessible areas. The first of these are three small empty rooms found in Lava Reef Zone Act 1. Just based on their size and appearance, it's quite clear they once would have been used to house the large special stage rings. They even still have paths that would have led to them, but these unfortunately have been blocked off by invisible barriers. These are located near this crusher thing here, to the right of this elevator, as well as to the right of this spin dash elevator. Next up is a small room with three monitors, one invincibility and two ring ones. And this area can be found near the first elevator thing here in Death Egg Zone. The entrance to this room actually isn't simply blocked off with an invisible wall like the previous ring rooms I mentioned, but rather these spikes are just in the way. So as such, there is no way to enter this area without the debug mode. I'd be pretty interested to know if the developers just forgot about this room or just didn't notice that it wasn't accessible in the final release. Well, this actually isn't the only secret normally inaccessible area with monitors either. Fitting the name well, Hidden Palace has a hidden area of its own. This area can be seen by flying up at this section here. Going left up here will lead to a row of monitors, each with a different bonus. Rings, one of each elemental shield, invincibility, and speed shoes, they're all here. Then instead by going right up here, there are also two ring monitors as well as a 1-up. You can actually access this area as Tails in Sonic 3 and Knuckles, but since Tails isn't normally playable in this game, you do need the debug menu to get here. Also, since there is basically one of each type of monitor here, minus the S monitor, I have a strange suspicion that this area might have been just used to test the effects of all the different monitors. Either that, or it's just a nice bonus for whoever found their way up here with Tails in Sonic 3 and Knuckles. And that, my friends, is about it for Sonic and Knuckles. Like I said, you can expect a video on Sonic 3 proper in a bit, and I promise I won't make you wait another year or anything like that. In the meantime, drop a like down below if you enjoyed this video, and be sure to catch up on some of my previous Sonic Lost Bits by clicking or tapping on the card right here. But as always, thank you all so much for tuning in and making it to the end here, and I will see you in a bit. And Knuckles.